Mouseketeers, it's Morgan Strong Comic here in my office with my regular book bookshelf, and I've got my my Disney posters over here fueling me with energy. Here's where all my writing magic happens. So I am ready for round cinco, round five, and Dan writes and I Disney March Villain Madness event where we put Disney villains head to head and see who is the baddest baddie of them all. This is round five. Thank you for voting in the first four rounds. Obviously, you picked my team because, I mean, I have Corolla, Jafar, Scar, and Yzma. I just, I, I just, I don't understand why you have to keep explaining things to Dan, but, oh well, we're going to do this, so we're going to do this. Now I have my fifth competitor today, and it is the grand, the mischievous. The scourge of the Neverland Seas, Captain Hook, or in, or in some cases it's this hand, Captain Hook of Neverland. And Captain Hook is very iconic, not only for Disney, but he's been iconic since the very early 1900s for the Peter Pan series, but I didn't realize he actually doesn't have a huge role in the whole collection of Peter Pan and the plays, and the author even admitted that originally he was going to have like an even smaller role but she decided to change a few things up in one scene, and I guess he became popular, and Captain Hook's like the whole villain franchise of Peter Pan now, which is pretty neat. So, Captain, this one's for you. Okay. Obviously, Captain Hook is a captain pirate of the ship, the Jolly Roger, and he sails in Neverland. I never quite understood why the adults in Neverland... I don't know how that happened. I mean, because the kids don't grow up. I know they kind of choose to be there. And then there's the adults who decide to become pirates unless they're in the Native American tribe. I don't really know. But I think it's pretty interesting that the adults decide to become pirates, which can act kind of childish at times. So, in all versions of Hook, not except Disney and otherwise, he is known to be ruthless and violent, bloodthirsty, but he is always a gentleman. And I can tell that by the way he dresses. I mean, come on. He's fabulous. He almost has a cool air about him. Like, he's, like, I know in uh, the original story, he's kind of almost idolized by some because he has this little invention. I think it's like some kind of metal device where he can smoke two, like, cigars or pipes at the same time while he's walking around doing his rounds on the ship. And that's just like, oh my gosh, he's such a BA. So, I, I guess that wouldn't be. I mean, I think personally that'd give you lung cancer twice as fast. But,. That, that is pretty cool. Although his hatred for Peter Pan is due to his hand being chopped off, and Peter Pan chopped his hand off and then fed it in front of the crocodile, in front of Hook, which is why Hook is so afraid of crocodiles. I didn't know that. that that's really mean. And Mr. Smee said, Oh, it's okay, Captain Hook. Peter Pan's just doing a childish prank. Cutting a hand off is childish, a childish prank? I used to think Peter Pan was amazing. It's my dad's favorite Disney film from when he was younger. But maybe the Once Upon a Time version of Peter Pan's a little more accurate. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, Captain Hook having his hand chopped off is why he's so violent towards Peter Pan and wants to get his revenge. And I can't really blame the guy. I mean, like I said, he's not really up there in tier with like Maleficent or Cruella. But he's, he's still got motivation. He, and then he is evil in his own, own way. I do remember the part where one of his crewmates is singing and he just shoots him. I mean, he didn't like that song. I, I, I don't know. But that, that's, that's pretty cruel because I think singing is awesome. And he's a child kidnapper. He's like a human drift bloom, which, which is horrible. He's all elegant and everything. And he has a really cool, shiny, and if you have a tissue deficit, ooh, shiny disorder like a lot of my friends do, that gets you right there. You just stare at his hook. And he'll just kidnap you, take you away like a drift bloom in Pokemon. <laughs> so, that, that's pretty low. And he kidnap, kidnaps fairies. I mean, I think Tinkerbell's kind of conceited sometimes, at least in the original Peter Pan movie. But, yeah, I, I, I don't think it's nice to kidnap fairies. I, I just think that's kind of low. His true name is never revealed. Um, it's He's been called James often, and he's been called Killian in Once Upon a Time. And... Oh, that Captain Hook? Oh, he's a baddie, but he's a baddie for a different reason. He has a picture. But 
anyway, we're not talking about that book because it keeps very, very different from the Disney counterpart. But his name is usually referred to as James, but it's actually not revealed in the original story. So mystery equals darkness, which equals evil, in my opinion. So, ooh, big mystery. His final words from when he kind of falls off, you know, walks the plank in a way, in the original Peter Pan, is bad form, which is hilarious. I mean, I don't know what my final words would be if I had a chance to say final words, but I, I, I think that's pretty good. And he's always going around his ship and kind of evaluating how his crew members sword fight, you know, bad form, good form. So I think the fact that his, I guess his final words are bad form is really funny to me. And, I don't know, in the wrestling match, I could see him, you know, like a final, I, don't, I keep saying final smash, because my husband and I play Smash Brothers a lot, but, you know, he takes the sword, and he, like, stabs it, and it goes, bad form! And just, I don't know. I, I think that would be pretty, pretty intense. And he's very good at swashbuckling. Or, you know, sword fighting, if you will. He's very good at that. So, I mean, that would just distract people, too. He, he'll, he'll, he can tell you what's wrong and critique you while you're sword fighting. And you're so distracted, like, wait, what? I gotta move my, what? <laughs> I, I think that'd be pretty epic. I haven't admittedly seen this film. I've seen all the other Tinkerbell movies so far. My husband um, and I enjoy them. My father-in-law really likes the Tinkerbell movies. They're just very sweet and endearing. And I found this out doing my research on the Disney Villain Database. And I found this really cool. Um, in, di in Disney's Tinkerbell and the Pirate Fairy, there's a cabin boy only known as James. He befriends the fairy, the main pirate fairy, only to eventually betray her. And apparently he kind of translates to the rest of the crew. He can understand fairy. Is this Hook? James Hook? I don't know. Maybe that explains why he eventually becomes a captain. And he's obsessed with fairy dust. Because I believe... some. I remember in one rendition he tried to get fairy dust and he couldn't fly. Yeah, that, that's a... That's pretty intense. The ultimate form of evil, and Dan, this is a laugh in your face. You know who voices young James in Tinkerbell and the Pirate Fairy? Loki. That's right. Tom voices young James in that Tinkerbell movie. Maybe Captain Hook's origins. Loki. I don't know how much you love Loki. Evil. Evil. <laughs> Yeah, I know you're going to hate that. I, I think I won just right there. And of course, in Jake and the Neverland Pirates, which is a preschool kind of version of where these cute little kids, Jake and his friends, you know, they go to Neverland, and they're good pirates, and they battle Captain Hook and Mr. Smeed, and I haven't really watched it. I just got that from the few little commercials I saw. But apparently in that, uh, there's Mama Hook, and she is this very brutal, ruthless pirate queen captain, and she raises young Hook to be like her, and he's kind of had a rough childhood from that. So, again, it usually goes back to the parents with these villains, or like something tra traumatic in their childhood, which makes them human, I suppose. So, I don't know. That's, that's kind of interesting right there. Um, Hook has been mentioned on Disney fan sites as being the, one of the top top six funniest Disney villains of all time. And like I did with Yzma, this is the same list. A good laugh goes a long way. I mean, you just you know, have his reactions, you know, I don't know, I, I figured if you want to stop Hook, you could get a crocodile, use the clock, but his facial expressions, they're so funny that you probably would just start laughing and would backfire, so, there you go, don't use the tick tock, the tick tock, it's not gonna work, Captain Hook, Jafar, and Maleficent are the only three villains in a Disney special, where they kidnap Mickey Mouse. I did that. I did this segment with my Jafar episode, but again, there's a lot of baddies, and the only these three got selected to kidnap the mascot of Disney, which is pretty intense. So good job, Captain Hook. He's also chosen in the Kingdom Hearts game, and I apologize. In my Jafar video, I said 1992, which is totally wrong. It's 2002 because the Kingdom Hearts came to America. So I deeply apologize, fellow Kingdom Hearts fans. But anyway, the same team that Jafar was on, selected by Maleficent to get the Princesses of Light, uh, Captain Hook is there also. I won't really give too much with the Neverland story. I have to admit, I had the most trouble in the Neverland stage in Kingdom Hearts because I had to fight my own shadow. Ugh! That was, I, I, I don't want to go into it. It was horrible. And of course, I mean, again, 
like I said with Jafar, twisted beard and twisted mustache. Captain Hook's got like that awesome mustache. <laughs> so I think a mustache about, you know, kind of tells how evil somebody is personally, at least in that world. So I'm competing in this round, or Captain Hook, I suppose, is badly in this round, gets Mother Gothel from Rapunzel on Dan's team. I, I'll admit it, this is going to be a pretty intense match. Mother Gothel is pretty harsh, and she's... I don't know. She she she's got ambitions. She she's not afraid to get what she wants. So this will definitely be an interesting match. And she knows how to use a dagger. So dagger and then a pirate fencing sword. I mean that would be pretty neat. So that's where the bad form, bad form. I don't know if she'll care, but that would be pretty awesome. And I wish we could bring the Jolly Roger in and have cannons. Just well, that'd be kind of cheap. But <laughs> So, Mother Gothel is my opponent in this round. So, Dan, I will, for once, give you props for a pretty decent selection. So, this battle is going to be close. But you guys know, you all have attention deficit. Ooh, shiny. Look at the hook. It's shiny. And that is singling me. Actually, perfect timing. That's time for me to say goodbye. So, guys, make sure you look at the link below. Vote for Captain Hook, the fantastic captain of Neverland. And I will see you guys in the final single round, round six. All right. It's Pirate's Life for me.